Now, tonight, unfortunately, I wasn't able to prepare the lesson to my satisfaction. But if you don't mind, then let me give you some other stories, and maybe we'll close out early for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. And make dua that next week, um, the lesson will be prepared to my my satisfaction and yours, inshallah ta'ala. Among what was said about the stories of people who repented is the story of a man who's called Malik ibn Dina, a very famous, pious man. Radiallahu anhu. How did he repent from his um, alcohol drinking? He said, I had a daughter born for me. And I loved her so much. And then when she started to crawl, I loved her even more. My heart was full of love for her. And whenever I would put my drink down, she would come to me and she would pull me and make me knock over my drink and it would spill all over my clothing. And when she became two years old, she died. I was very sad and then I got drunk and fell asleep. And then I saw in my dream as if the people of their graves had come out and the creations were being herded and I was one of them being taken to the station of the gathering on judgment day and I heard behind me a hiss and so I turned, and behold, there was a great dragon, dark blue, very scary. And its mouth was opened, and it was rushing towards me. So I ran away, horrified. And as I ran, I passed by an old man with clean clothes and nice shape, and he had a nice smell. And I said, Assalamu alaikum. He said, Wa alaikum as -salam. I said, Save me, help me. He said, I am weak. This dragon is stronger than I am. But go faster. Maybe Allah will save you. He said, So I turned and I ran. And then I went up on a plateau among the plateaus of Judgment Day. And I found myself just on the edge and the inferno is right before me. The fire itself was so horrifying and I almost fell into it because I was so afraid of the dragon. And then I heard a voice call out, go back, you are not among the people of this fire. Then my heart calmed down and I went back but when I went back the dragon came back after me and then I went to the old man I said Sheikh I asked you to save me from this dragon and you didn't do it and then the old man cried and he said I am weak but go up this mountain there in that mountain are the deposits left by the Muslims. If you have any deposit there, it will help you. So I looked at the mountain and there was an opening in there and it had covers over it, something that comes over the opening of this, of this cave or this hole in the mountain. Very nice, very beautiful with jewels and silk. So I ran towards it, and the dragon was on my trail until I got close to it. Then one of the angels called out, lift up the covers. Maybe there would be for this bad, it's this one who's in a very, very bad situation, a deposit that will save him from his enemy. And then the covers were lifted. And then there came up 
To me, children, their faces like the moon. And then the dragon drew near, and I became confused. Wave after wave, children passing by me. And then there was my daughter who died. She came up to me with them. And then when she saw me, she cried and she said, Abi, wallah, daddy, wallahi. And then she jumped into my hands. And then she extended her left hand to my right hand and I held on to her. She extended her right hand towards the dragon. And then the dragon turned and ran away. And then she sat me down. And then she sat with me. And she said, Oh, Father, Alam ya'ni lil-lazina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikri Allah. Which means, Is it not time for the believers for their hearts to fear Allah from the remembrance of Allah. He said, then I cried. And I said, oh, my daughter, you children know the Quran? She said, oh, father, we know about the Quran better than you do. So I said, tell me about this dragon that wanted to destroy me. She said, that was your bad deed. You strengthened it, and it wanted to drown you in the fire of hell. I said, tell me about that old man that I passed by. She said, oh, father, that was your good deeds. You weakened it so that it was unable to stand up against your bad deeds. He said, then I woke up in shock. And when I got up, I abandoned that bad deed that I used to do. And I repented to Allah Azza wa Jal. So, more than a thousand years ago, it was said, in the first century after the hijrah, the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a man who used to work in the castle of Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. And this man who worked in the castle of Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, he saw a young lady that he liked. So he became infatuated with her. One day, that man was present when another man had slipped or tripped. And that man who tripped, he was carrying honey. So he dropped this honey and then the little children came and they started eating that honey. And while they were eating the honey, they were saying, may the dam of Allah be upon Iblis. May Allah put Iblis to shame. They were insulting Iblis and damning him while eating this honey. So this man who worked in the castle of Al-Hajjaj, he said to those children, say, may Allah reward Iblis with goodness. He is the reason why you're eating this honey. Don't say, May Allah damn Iblis and may Allah put Iblis to shame. So Iblis liked that. So he appeared to this man. He took a form and appeared to him and he said to him, You have a favor with me. Whenever you want to meet me, then you can summon me like this. And he told the man how to summon him. And then that man became famous. Meaning he used to do things, strange things. So he became known as the friend of Iblis. Then once this man remembered what Iblis had said to him. So he summoned Iblis. And then Iblis appeared. 
And then he told Iblis what he wanted. He told Iblis about that girl that he liked. So then what happened? Iblis started bringing that girl to him in the nighttime and bringing her back in the morning. So that girl became very depressed. So one night, Al-Hajjaj himself, he passed by this, by this young lady. And he found her very down. He said to her, what's wrong with you? So she told him. She said, at night time, I get whisked away to some man's house. And then he does to me what he does to me. And then I get taken back. So Al-Hajjaj said to her, if this happens again, then take some dye, some dye, and mark the door of his house. So she did that. One night, the devil came and took her, and she had the dye on her hand. And when she went into that man's house, meaning when she was took into that man's house, she put her hand on his door. She left a mark. Then after that, Al-Hajjaj, he sent his officers out searching for the house with the sign and behold, it was that man, that one who was famous as the friend of Iblis. So they arrested him and they took him away and while he was like that being taken, the devil came and took him away. He saved that man from being killed. He flew away with that man in the air and that man disappeared. And nothing is known of him since then. Had Al-Hajjaj found him, he would have killed him. Iblis, he was thankful to that man for how he stood up for him. And so he did that man these favors. The story of this man is one example among many of why if someone performs or it seems that he's performing extraordinary things like he sits in the air or he walks on the water for example or he flies we don't rush to say this man is a pious wali even if he was doing something like that Rather, we wait to see his compliance with the religion. We don't settle with the fact that he's doing something supernatural. We wait to see his compliance with the religion. So then, if we saw that he obeys Allah, we would think about him that he's a wali. And if we saw that he does not obey Allah, then we would not think about him that he's a wali. Let's do one more, inshallah. It was said that there was a man who was known as Dinar al iyar Dinar al iyar And his mother was a pious woman who used to preach to him and advise him, but he didn't used to listen. Until one day when he passed by a cemetery. He went through the cemetery and he saw some bones, human bones in the dirt. So he took up some of those bones and they crumbled in his hands. And then he thought about himself. And he said, Dinar. He said, Dinar. as if these are your bones and your body shall turn to soil and then he regretted all of what he used to do and he was determined to repent and he raised his head up to the sky because that's the Qibla for the dua and he said Ilahi wa Sayyidi oh my God Oh, my master, I submit to you 
the keys to my affair. Accept me, O my Lord, and have mercy on me. And then he went to his mother, and his complexion had changed, and his heart had changed. And he said, O mother, what is done to the runaway slave when his master catches him? She said, he is given rough clothing and rough food, and he is shackled hand and foot. He said, I want a cloak made of wool, and do to me, mother, like what's done to the runaway slave. So she did to him what he wanted. He wore the wool, he ate the rough rough food, yani the food that's not so delicious, and he shackled himself. And then when the night would come in, he would cry very strongly, and he would say to himself, Dinar, do you have the strength to bear the fire? How did you subject yourself to be deserving of the punishment of Allah? And then he wouldn't stop being like that, blaming himself, scolding himself until the morning. And his mother said, Oh, my son, take it easy on yourself. He said, Leave me to tire myself a little bit. Which, mashallah, sometimes you want to do good as a Muslim. And you want to be strict with yourself and obey Allah and you'll find people around you who tell you, take it easy on yourself. So when the people tell you that, don't listen to them. Maybe they need to be harder on themselves also. He said to his mother, leave me to tire myself a little. Perhaps I will relax later for a long time. Oh, mother, certainly tomorrow I have an appointment. I have a standing, a long standing that I have to deal with. I shall be judged by the great Lord. And I do not know, shall I be taken away to hell? Or will I be commanded to be taken away to paradise? She said, oh, my son. Give yourself some ease. He said, I do not seek relaxation. It is as if, O oh mother, tomorrow you will be with the creations, driven towards paradise, and I shall be driven towards hell with the people of hell. And he wouldn't stop being like that. She'd tell him, take it easy, relax, stop being so hard on yourself. He wouldn't stop. So she left him to be as he wanted to be. And he would cry, and he would worship Allah, and he would recite the Qur'an. And one night he came across the saying of Allah, فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ It means, by your Lord, O Muhammad, Allah shall certainly ask them all about what they used to do. And he pondered on this ayah, and he thought about this ayah a lot. And he started crying, and he cried until he fainted. And then his mother came, and she called out to him, and he didn't answer her. She said to him, Ya Habibi. And he said with a weak voice, Oh mother, if you don't find me, on Judgment Day, then ask Malik, the keeper of hell, about me. And then he took a big gasp, and he died right there. May Allah have mercy on him. So then his mother washed him, and she prepared him, and then she went out and she called out, Oh, people, come and pray for the one who was killed by the fear of hell. So then the people came from all directions. And there was not seen a bigger congregation. Nor was there seen more tears. And then when they buried him, 
some of his friends, they slept at night and they saw him in their dream walking in paradise. And he was reciting the ayah. فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجِمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ By your Lord, O Muhammad, Allah will certainly ask them all about what they used to do. And he was saying, as they saw in their dream, I swear by his glory and I swear by his greatness, he asked me, and he had mercy on me, and he forgave me, and he pardoned me. Tell my mother. Wallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala a'lam subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.